today with Matt Wiederhold, Main Street Medina. And I am Rick Stevenson from Medina Hardware. And we are here today celebrating some of our centuries old business in honor of the Medina Bicentennial. So Rick, please tell us a little bit about Medina Hardware. All right then, I'd be happy to. Um, Medina Hardware is a very old business. It's probably the oldest continuously running uh, retail establishment on the square. I do know, of course, it's the only business that that's, was opened and is continued in the same line of retail, which is, of course, hardware. Uh, that was, uh, was owned by basically two families. It uh, was opened in 1872 by the Oatman family, very famous uh, entrepreneurial uh, family that had a, other businesses and interests in Medina. Uh, they lived on South Court Street, just down the street, in a beautiful home that still exists. Um, and they uh, had a, at one time they had a uh, meat market next door. And there were several brothers and a couple of sisters, and they ran the store really well and did very well uh, in, in lines of cutlery and stove, uh, stoves. You, know, you can imagine the things that they sold back in the late 1800s. Um, tinware. Sure, everything they could uh, you know, things like that, and uh, it progressed through until, um, you know, we had a pretty bad econo economic slump in the, in the late 20s, early 30s, and they didn't survive, and um, that was the time my father was graduating from uh, business school in Miami, and uh, his first job didn't work out, and uh, a friend of his was uh, involved in the hardware industry as well, and uh, there was a job opening here to, to manage this store, so he thought he'd give it a shot since he was a business major. He came uh, up from Zanesville, Ohio, where he grew up, and uh, he had a choice of going to two stores, and he liked Medina, he liked the area. The store kind of, you know, as a, again, it's always been here, so he decided to, to uh, do improvements to it. Um, it had a, it was actually, believe it or not, it was longer than it is now. He wanted a housewares department and he needed to have it a little bit more weather uh, resistant. So he tore off the back of the store, built this small warehouse back there, heated air, uh, heated it, you know, put in new plumbing and so forth. And that was um, before, oh, I'm sorry, that was after World War II. He went away to World War II and when he came back, he did that. And what year did uh, your father buy the store from the Oatmans? Uh, 1933. Okay. Thirty-three. Yeah. He so thought 85, 85 years. Yeah, he, he was going to stick around for five years was his plan, and it ended up being <laughs> 85 years. And, right. And he, you know, he always loved Medina, and he, and every time he, he was a world traveler, and every time he'd come back, I'd pick him up at the airport, and we'd come through the square, and he says, "Man, it's nice to be home. What a beautiful place." You know, he always loved, loved it, and he loved the store, and he loved the people. All right, so here we are inside the mighty Medina Hardware. Uh, it's 25 feet wide and 150 feet long. Um, and there's a lot of stuff packed in here. It's like an old ship, you know. Every single nook and cranny is used. And uh, Dad used to say, I have more stuff in our drawers than most stores have in their, on their shelves, you know, because it's all hidden away. And uh, these ladders here that you see behind me are original. Um, interesting story, there used to be four of them rolling back and forth. And uh, unfortunately, we, you know, we, he, took, he took two down because they used to really get in the way and uh, didn't keep them. I wish I had them today because there's, they're getting pretty high, they're high mileage ladders. Yeah. <laughs> and the drawers, there used to be uh, uh, glass, uh, Oatman's thought it was, their, their, their big draw was that they had a huge cutlery department. They had all kinds of knives and scissors and axes and there was glass glass uh, in the front of the store and beautiful curved glass um, displays which were were taken out and uh, I don't I think these drawers were probably here um, all this time the tin roof of course is original some of these drawers are absolutely huge but they're all full they all have a they all have a reason to be here these ladders are are pretty pretty amazing because I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of miles. The first three steps have been replaced, but these, the rest of them are all original, and you can see how they're quite, uh, the grain is quite ingrained, but they are 
they're very sturdy. I don't have any, I've never, knock on wood, never had anybody fall off these and I've never had one break. They're made by, they were made in Ashland, Ohio by Myers, which is uh, now a pump company. Oh, cool. You've probably heard of Myers Pumps. They, I think they were a farm equipment company and they evolved to pumps eventually and they, uh, the, um, I don't know if you can get a good close up of that. Can you see the Myers written on the ladder up there? So this is our register. This is, uh, this, this register has a name. Its name is Natalie. It's on our Facebook page. And uh, it, it, it's pretty durable. It is, uh, as you can, the biggest question we get is how old is your register? So we just put it on here. Most people, most people eventually read that. But it's, it is 99 years old. And um, it replaced one that only went to $9.99. And even back in the 30s, that wasn't enough. And we still use it, believe it or not, to this day. That's my drawer, full of money because I'm a good salesman. And uh, so does everyone have their own drawer? How does that work? Uh, we just right now we're just using A and B, um, E and, and E and A. But, but we for years we've used all three, all four drawers. Oh, that's, cool. that's cool. And we have a spare one upstairs, and its name is Nate, and it's there in suspended animation. Nate and, and it's just well, they're nationals. Yep. It works. And it's uh, it's a parts donor. It's okay. given its clutch and its motor yeah. to Natalie. And Natalie is a faithful machine and an awesome old register. And I will never get any beep, beep, buzz, buzz, LED nice. microprocessing machine. That's awesome. As, uh, as long as I have anything to say. The cool part is, too, when we have a power outage, it's a hybrid, so we just stick to, right. you know, hybrid isn't in a, in a new term. And we can crank it to run it instead of using a electricity. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So tell us a little bit, Rick, about the, the string, the wrapping thing, and the, the bag holder. Just all these other right. pieces well, of the hardware. These are, this is a string we use to tie up screen. And uh, it's got a weight on it to bring it back up. With two different weights here. And this heavier stuff we use for uh, binding pipes and stuff and you might want to watch over there because that's pretty cool watch this I'm gonna bring it to action you ready See, that's where it feeds off of I put my initials on the con I, I loaded that up December I'm sorry February 24th 1979 oh. and it's almost out <laughs> This back holder here is, is also some people seem to be enchanted with. It's really beautiful. Serves a purpose or wouldn't be here. But it's from a, a Weedham and Kenton company, which was a big wholesale grocery store. And I suppose they gave those to all their customers. Maybe that came from next door at the Oatman Butcher Market as well. I don't know. But it was a very big concern up in downtown Cleveland along the river. 53, 55, 57. And 59 Water Street, which is right near the, the flats area. So that we use that all the time now too. This was this used to be the old floor. And I think they literally raised it up uh, to build onto this building. We're on the second floor. This used to be the outside. You can see where this was outdoors at one time. And uh, Kind of cool old stuff. I mean, there's a lot of old buildings on the square that are unimproved on their second floor, but I don't think any of them that are this original. But what's kind of cool is uh, we they used to have a freight elevator, and you can understand why they wouldn't take those things down because look at the size of those gears. It was electric. The opening, it was just you know, from here up, up and down. I know they, I've heard they used to build bicycles. They had a, the Omens had a patent for a wooden trough hanger and they made, they were a big dealer for stoves. So I think they probably assembled them up here because I think they came knocked down. This is the housewares basement, which is um, unfortunately a little known secret. <laughs> but uh, this part of the store was just a crawl space at one time. 
until after World War II and my dad wanted to, we needed more floor space and he didn't want to move. We sold appliances. He envisioned these, this being appliances downstairs mm -hmm. and plumbing fixtures. Okay. Uh, he was here during rural, rural electrification, so we sold an awful, awful lot of plumbing fixtures and electrical items mm -hmm. because people out, at, you know, out in, the, in the rural areas were getting electricity, and you know, and yeah. a lot of contractors got their stuff out of this store. Um, in those days but anyway we ended up one winter they dug this basement out by hand with wheelbarrows and three or four guys it was a crawl space which was only about three feet deep and uh, I don't know how much engineering came into place but I know they stopped when they hit a pipe and luckily it was tall enough for most everybody right, right. you know I get a few customers down here that have to duck but it it's pretty comfortable you. you know it's it works it's uh, and there's an awful lot of stuff down here, again, you know, squirreled away. We sell a lot of parts. We sell a lot of crockery, cast iron, um, small electrical appliances. Medina was a, you know, it, it was a, a real known place, and it was a place of commerce sure. and rest. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there were hotels. So I, I love to see the old photographs, and I love to see all and think about this store and the place that it, that it had during those times because the families that, you know, I've been in this town a million years, mm -hmm. their grandkids and their great grandkids, they're still coming in here. Yep. And that's, it's, it's a pretty uh, awesome thing, I think. Oh, we absolutely. have a very good, loyal clientele. Mm -hmm. Family that I've grown, we've, I've grown up with. And I miss an awful lot of the old people, you know, that oh. were here and uh, no. the stories and, you know, we, thinking of my dad sitting up against the counter up there and just talking about you know, to them were the old times. Right, just life and in general. And I was, uh, I could name a lot of people that it really made the day go fast, if, yeah. you know, when they'd come in and I miss them all. Yeah. One thing that strikes me about uh, the square is um, that it's extremely appreciated from an architectural standpoint. Um, and because of that, there's so, you know, there's so many people that don't want to lose it. Um, the I remember I remember going down the street one time, and I've said this story before. And I was following a lady, probably had a cup of coffee in my hand like I do now, coming back from the coffee shop, and she said I, something to the effect, "I love this town. I wonder how they make it look old." And you know, she thought she was in Disney World or something, but uh, it's actually, um, you know, if it was any uglier, it'd probably be gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if it had, if it were just a couple of great buildings, we wouldn't be where we are today with, you know, with Main Street Medina and the, the architectural, uh, uh, historical review or historical society and stuff like that, because it really, you know, the square is really the magnet. And I have to say that um, this store probably wouldn't be here if it was a block away. Yeah, you're right. You know, so um, it really wouldn't. And I, I can't move because of that. I couldn't, I couldn't think about it. Yeah, I'd like to have a big parking lot. Yeah, I'd like to have air conditioning, you know, that wasn't <laughs> on casters. Uh, but it just wouldn't be us, you know, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be cool. Yeah. And so, um, even people that come in here, you know, are just, their eyes are like mm -hmm. coffee saucers. It, they're just amazed. And I take it for granted because I've been here my whole life, but, you know, I can step back and get removed from it because I don't see it anywhere else. Yeah. You know, if I do, it's been commercialized heavily and it's owned by somebody who has seven stores like that, you know, and they've, they do all the right things to to uh, keep it going. I'm, I'm lucky that there's other people that are keeping my business going, at least from a traffic standpoint, you know, from people walking through the door. The events that come on the square um, are great for bringing people in. They might not necessarily transcend and reflect into sales right away, but they will eventually. This business has been 
it's like a, a, an old ship, you know. I, I used that reference before, the way things are tucked away, but it just has, you know, it just has a staying power that connects people to a past that they wish they were not necessarily a part of, but wish they had seen in person and, you know, could be, uh, could be brought back somewhat. Because we wait on people, you know, you get, you walk in this store and you almost get attacked a couple times maybe. May I help you? What are you looking for? If you're browsing, fine, go ahead. But um, we're, we solve problems here. So um, whatever that's worth, you know, value has a lot more to do with, uh, with that than some price tag. And I think people realize that in this town. And thankfully, you know, they still continue to patronize businesses that they feel offer a value. So there we are.